So an ellipse also has a center, but an ellipse looks a lot like a circle, okay? It's just a flattened out circle. The ellipse, its technical definition is it's the set of all points in a plane whose distances from two fixed points, we call them the foci, have a constant sum. The center is halfway between the two foci. So we can have two different equations here. The key is the difference between these two is that A is greater than B. A is greater than B. So if X is over the bigger number, then this is going to have a horizontal, and I can't spell horizontal while I'm trying to think of what I'm going to say next, horizontal orientation. Okay, it has a horizontal orientation, and if we think about a, an ellipse being oriented horizontally, then it's going to be wider than it is tall. Okay, it's going to be wider than it is tall. Its focal axis, that means the axis of the, that the center and the foci are on, is going to be y equals k. The easy way to remember that is if it's oriented horizontally, horizontal lines are y equals, so y equals k. The vertices are going to be the x value of your center plus or minus a and the y value of your center. Okay, they're on that same horizontal line, so the, the k stays constant. You're just going to add that a and you're going to subtract the a from the center. So this one, let me draw an example. Let's say, I, and I'm just, I don't have an equation that I'm going by. I'm just drawing a arbitrary um, equation here. Y equals k, there's my um, <clears throat> axis. Let's say that the center is right here. That's hk right here. So I could have something that looks like this. I don't know exactly how wide or how tall or anything like that because I don't have the exact equation, but there's an, an example, a general example of an ellipse that's oriented horizontally. Okay, if y is over the bigger number, then it's vertically oriented, and so that means that it's taller than it is y. And this time, vertical lines are x equals, so it would be x equals the x coordinate of the center. So x equals h is the focal axis. And this time, the vertices, they're on h, and then it would be k plus or minus f, because you're varying vertically, so you add that to the y value. <coughs> So let's say, for example, here is our focal axis. And let's say, I don't know, let's put the center right here. And all of these, the nice thing is, all of these are completely symmetric. They have some form or multiple forms of symmetry. So. It's a little fun fact as well. <clears throat> okay. It would be a little bit more complex to solve these for y. It's doable, um, but it's just a little bit more involved. You would still move the x term to the right side, then you'd multiply by the a squared, then you would take the square root, and then you would add the k. Just a little foreshadowing there. All right. Now, the last one that's a little different is a hyperbola. Okay, now it's not an extreme exaggeration, English people, um, but it is a figure in geometry as well. So they also have a center, HK. That's the nice thing that's pretty standard about all these, the whole center HK thing. But the hyperbola differs by one word from an ellipse. They have a constant difference. 
they have a constant difference. So if you look at the difference in these equations, the only difference between an ellipse and a hyperbola is the ellipse is you're adding it, the hyperbola you're subtracting. Okay, there's a minus sign between these two fractions and the hyperbola. So if the x comes first, then it's going to cross the x-axis. Your hyperbola is going to cross the x-axis, and we'll see what that looks like here in a second. But let's just write down all the information first. Your focal axis is the same idea. If, it, the, if it's the x, then it's y equals k. Your vertices are the same, h plus or minus a, k. Now, hyperbolas have asymptotes. They have slant asymptotes, actually. Remember, what other functions have asymptotes? What do we call them? Oh, come on. Starts with an R. Rational. Radical has roots. Rational have asymptotes. Whew, we've got to work on that vocabulary. All right, now, this is definitely one of those things I am not expecting you to remember this, um, but, nope, I flipped it, it's B over A, my bad, B over A. Okay, B over A <coughs> times X minus H plus K are the equations for your asymptotes. So, um, here is an example of a hyperbola. Again, it's symmetric. So they're going to cross the x-axis at the same place. I don't know if I did that on my drawing exactly, but that's what a hyperbola looks like. It's kind of like two parabolas. It's like a parabola and it's mirror image, okay? It's a hyperbola. Um, and the foci are inside the curves, just like they are with the parabola, okay? So there's one focus. There's another focus. And then you got asymptotes right here. They have the same equation, they just have opposite slopes. One's positive, one's negative. Now, if the y comes first and the x is negative, it's going to cross the y axis. So the focal axis is going to be x equals h. Your vertices are going to be x, or excuse me, h and k plus or minus a. Your asymptotes are a over b, x minus h plus k. So, you can have skinny hyperbolas. That means our asymptotes are very steep. Now, um, I centered these about the origin, just like with all the others. They could be centered somewhere else. They could be centered in the first quadrant. They could be centered in the third quadrant. They could be shifted all around. Um, I just drew a simple scenario of that. Um, our foci, again, are inside the curves. Okay. So, 